Auburn's game against Vanderbilt, weirdly important. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is a crossover edition with Locked On Auburn and Locked On Vandy. I'm Zach Blackerby. He is Corey Burton, of course, with Locked On Vandy. And man, this game is so intriguing for several reasons when you talk about the battle between Auburn and Vandy because, Corey, I think both teams, if they want to overachieve this season, they've got to win this game. They've yeah, got to win this game. So, I mean, you said it at the top there. Uh, if Fandy wants to go to a bowl game, they've got to beat the Tigers in Auburn. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's going to be huge, and, and they can finish that off the next week against South Carolina. But, I mean, that that's a two-game stretch that they absolutely have to have if they're going to yeah. go bowling. Yeah, I mean, where where is the game last year in the mind of the Vanderbilt football program and the Vanderbilt fan base? Because, I mean, it's no secret, Auburn went to Nashville. From all accounts, they took over the stadium, and it was a very one-sided affair. Has Vandy done enough to say, okay, now we're going on the road and we're going to be able to do that to you? Well, they got the the they got the core of the team that went on the road and did that to you, uh, New Mexico State. Um, I think ah. that makes them feel a little bit better. Yeah, uh, sure. the quarterback, the overhaul, everything, all the changes that were made in the off season. I mean, that list is a mile long. So there's a lot of confidence right now in the program. Whereas, it's like the strength and conditioning changed, the coordinators changed. I think last year Vandy just lacked so much of an identity that the fans were apathetic. The team was apathetic. They didn't really know what they wanted to do offensively or defensively. Yeah. And that just, it was at a downward spiral at that point in time. And, um, but there's some new energy in, in the building in, in on West End. And it's going to be, honestly, this is going to be a different Vandy team from last year, a way different Vandy team. So it's so interesting that you say that because you talk about, last year being kind of an apathetic point of view from the fan base. And that's kind of what it seemed like it. That's what I got whenever I saw Clark Lee talk was just like not a whole lot of passion, just, just kind of there. But last week in Dallas at SEC media days, I think you kind of saw a different Clark Lee than I've seen the last few years and last you know few times that I've seen him talk. He had a little bit more of a personality. He seemed a little bit more comfortable I think the confidence has kind of always been there with him, but he did seem different, Corey. I mean, do you think that's because of this team or is it just, hey, maybe we caught him on a good day? No, I think he honestly feels good. I mean, everything you've ever seen throughout the course of the offseason, anytime that he was available to be talked to during spring practice, uh, in clips, things like that, talking to the team, he yeah. seems way more engaged. And I mean, I think that was part of the problem last year is he, I think he's – I think he's trying to find his identity as a head coach. And he thought maybe he was going to be that CEO type where he could just sit at 30,000 feet and right. let his coordinators do a lot of the grunt work. And he just kind of manages. It. And I think he lost touch. Mm. And then I think things started spiraling and he didn't know what to do. And he just kind of shut down this year, taking over his defensive coordinator has really engaged him. And I think has unlocked something in his personality. He's still his personality is still very matter of fact, and he's kind of just a dry person by nature. So sure. I think that throws a lot of people off. But he's uh, I mean, there's clips of him doing can openers into a pool at his house on official visit weekends. Uh, it fully clothed, like things like that that you've never seen uh, on for for him or Vandy or anything. Like you didn't see much of anything on social media. Now you're seeing a lot on social media. So a lot has changed his personality is starting to come out which is great yeah i mean is it gonna be too late i guess, I guess is the question um it's, I mean, not, he, he, it's not too late it's not yeah. too late all right all they're, right they're patient it, it, v- vandy's patient um their administration's patient i mean they gave stackhouse five years and it took a absolute disaster to for them to fire him so yeah and you're starting to see odds come out you know our friends at FanDuel talking about it like the the coaches in the SEC and just the coaches out the country like odds to get fired mm. 
first during the season. Like he's on all of those lists. He's not yeah. usually at the top, but he's usually like top five, depending on he's up on there. where you look. Yeah. I mean, and is that fair? It's fair. I, I think there's some circumstances where that is absolutely true. I think if he but has he get fired after this game, potentially that we're talking about when, when yeah. they go to Auburn. It depends on where the season's at. I, I think sure. if, if they're if they're sitting on two wins, and then they get crushed by Auburn, I, yeah, you could see that happen because Jerry Kill's sitting there, and they just let Jerry Kill finish out the season. But um, if they're sitting at like four wins and they lose, probably not. Yeah. Um, they'll make a decision after, depending on how they finish against South Carolina, LSU, and Tennessee. But I, I think unless it's a total total disaster, total just utter failure of like three wins or less, I, I think gets him the boot pretty easily. Four wins is a decision. Five wins is safe. Six wins is you're, you're better than safe. So this game is super inch. Auburn's schedule is so weird. Mm-hmm. They, uh, you know, they play five home games and then they don't play a home game at all in the month of October. Yeah, that is strange. And then they kick off November hosting Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. And it's an early kick. We don't know exactly the time, but it's been slated as an early kick. It'll probably be it'll probably be a eleven. It yeah. screams eleven o'clock. Yeah, right. Like this game screams right. eleven o'clock kick. Yeah. Totally with you. Mm-hmm. But still, this is gonna be a fan base that's had to watch their team on the TV for the last month. And I, I just think it's gonna be a pretty solid environment, even for an 11 o'clock kick. And let's, to me, honest, I, Zach, that environment's always crazy. So sure. Sure. There have been some times where 11 o'clock kicks are, are a little dead. We'll see. Um, but to me, I, I just, everything I look at points to Auburn in this matchup. I, am I crazy for thinking that? No, you're not. Um, I, I think what Auburn, does really well is Jarquez Hunter is is an absolute maniac and sure and, and he he's a, in the run game he's a cheat code and that's where Vandy has kind of and if you look at how Vandy's defense is built they're not I mean they don't have any marquee names in the defensive front except for uh, Langston Patterson mm-hmm. so you don't really know uh, a, versus the run what they're going to do that's going to have to be something that we'll find out throughout the course of fall camp but. I mean that that's an advantage that Auburn has. They're probably a little a little bit better up front uh, on both sides of the ball. So it, it's yeah. it's not crazy. I, I think Vandy can get them if they can't find a way to stop Diego Pavi and, and and they can't seem to find answers defensively on on how to kind of get a beat on what Vandy's doing. Yeah, the where this falls on Vanderbilt's schedule is it's after Vandy host Texas, which. I assume you think Texas is going to be good. Most people think Texas is, is, is going to be good. Yeah. How do you think that impacts Vandy a week after playing Texas in, in Nashville? Uh, it just depends on where we are from an injury standpoint. Um, I mean, Texas sure. is going to be a you know it's going to be a slugfest. But again, my my main worry uh, when I think about Texas and Oklahoma entering the SEC, this is the first time they're ever going to play a gauntlet schedule like that. Yeah, and you get to mid October. You could see a Texas team that's exhausted. Now, I, I don't think they're going to be too exhausted to to, to beat Vandy, I, mm-hmm. but they're going to be. It, it may not be as physical as it probably could be, and it, it could be a weird game. But I don't think it impacts Vandy terribly, uh, uh, unless there's a ton of injuries. So you mentioned a hypothetical where it's like, okay, if all, uh, if Vanderbilt has four wins going into this game between Auburn. And Vandy, what do you think those four wins are? So Alcorn State, Georgia State, Ball State. Yeah. Right. And then probably Kentucky. Because I, I, oh, I that'd be interesting. I, 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 nothing stands out to me about Kentucky. That's the thing. There's nothing that jumps off the page about Kentucky unless you know something I don't. I just, they have a new quarterback, new coordinator. Um, they're just kind of good, but they're not mm-hmm. great. And, that game's in Lexington, which is a challenge, but that's sure. the game that I think Vandy has a chance at. I think Vandy has a legitimate chance in the opener against Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, I do too. I'm yeah. totally there with you. I, I'm not going to push back on that at all. Um, it's interesting because I'm taking that for for sure. It's 13 and a half is 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 the line right now. Uh, yeah, I think I'm taking that too. Uh, it's interesting because Auburn and Vandy both play in Lexington, 
Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, is that going to be a game that both teams win? I, I mean, think it can be. I think yeah, I think sure. Kentucky's going to have a hard time against y'all's run game. I think Vandy's run game is going to be incredible too. Um, so I think if if I say we if we can find that mean my team your team both of our teams if we Understood. can find a way to contain Barry on Brown, I think that game gets a lot easier. Yeah, uh, I'm there with you. X factor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is Brock Vanderdorf going to just beat teams? It's like I'm at quarterback. I, I I'm not. I'm not so. banking on it. Yeah, I'm there with you. I'm there Definitely with you. not early. Definitely not when they play. By the time they play Vandy, maybe mm-hmm. later on in the season, he's a good talent. He's just we just don't know anything about him. Yeah. All right. The, there's one X factor. You, you talk about X factors. There's one X factor in this game that we can't ignore. You've already mentioned it. We'll discuss it in just a moment. Right here on this crossover dish between Locked On Auburn and Locked On Vandy. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Corey, can you imagine? Buying a part for your car, truck, or SUV anywhere other than eBay Motors. I can't. No, I can't either, man. I can't either. They, they say it in the, in the script here. Over 122 million parts. I don't wow. know if somebody sat there and counted. I have no clue. I feel but sorry that's for a that ton. person. What a job that would be. That would take weeks. Yeah. That would take weeks. But somebody did it. You're somebody did it over at eBay Motors. Cha-ching. That's right. It's easy money. It's just monotonous. But seriously, check it out ebaymotors.com. If you go to a brick and mortar store, odds are they're not going to have exactly what you're looking for anyway. They're going to order it. You might as well just order it. And with eBay motors, you're burning rubber and not cash because it's just going to make more sense for your wallet to go to eBay motors. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to you as customers. That's right. Corey, the X factor in this is Diego Pavia. It, it has to be. Yeah, it, it has it to be. I mean, I mean what? It's one of your guys. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, it was insane. And Auburn just took it. Auburn just took Pavia um, a year ago when, when he was the quarterback for New Mexico State. And that's going to be something that Auburn's got to wear for a long time. And Hugh Freeze is going to have to wear for the rest of his career. I mean, it's just one of those historically bad losses. And a lot of it had to do with him. A lot of it had to do with him. Most of it had to do with his exceptional play. And so he goes to Vanderbilt, and as soon as his, I mean, as soon as that kind of broke, Auburn fans are like, "Oh no, he's coming back again." Mm. I mean, does it give Vandy fans any more confidence? Not even just going into the Auburn game because that's so far from now, but just going into the season. I, I know it's not officially like named the starter; he's not officially the guy, but it certainly feels like he should be. Yeah, I mean, it, he is going to be named. It's just a matter of right. them actually doing it in the press. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, he's such a master of that offense. He's been in that offense for two years with mm-hmm. Tim Beck. He knows everything about it. He can get everybody else lined up. He could probably make some of those throws blindfolded, if we're being honest. But um, it, sure. it's it's just one of those things where the confidence that he has, just the innate confidence he has, take football out of it, is a lot and it, it can it can fuel a team but you throw in the the knowledge the confidence in his knowledge of the scheme and getting guys lined up and knowing where to go and knowing how to coach those guys up yeah that's just it, it just gives you so much more of an edge and those guys go out there and, and they're going to make those plays now because they know where to go they're going to make those plays confidently even though we've got a bunch of transfer portal guys on the line and um, yeah. out wide at, at the receiver spots. And so it, it's just, you know, he just, he's just, people are just drawn to him. Mm-hmm. He's a magnet. And um, you know, from day one, from day one, when he was eligible to start working out with them uh, back in May, when he, mm-hmm. when he enrolled, um, it was, I mean, it clicked just like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking from the Auburn perspective, there's just, there's a lot of same guys that come back on this defense and yeah. they remember that he suplexed one of, one of those <laughs> yeah. guys. So they're probably going to play. They're probably going to rush extra hard, right? It, it, to me. I, yeah. It's like, th- there's just no way he sneaks up on them twice. And huh. I think, I think this is honestly a blessing in disguise because I think Vanderbilt coming into Auburn at this point in the season could scream trap game, depending on how the seasons are going for both of these teams. And I think the emotion that these guys are going to prepare for Diego Pavia because of what happened last year. Mm-hmm. I think it's a blessing in disguise for Auburn's defense. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and Pavia will most definitely be ready there too. I mean, I sure. I just think, you know, with with the scheme wise stuff, I, I think you, they're gonna take what what worked against Auburn, try to increase the tempo uh with with the new helmet com stuff and the new uh right. tablet stuff. Like I think you're gonna be able to advance what you're able to do. The chess match is gonna become more intense. Mm-hmm. Um they might do some more check with me's. He may call some more things on the field. Like I, I think there's a lot of things that he knows that other quarterbacks in that system wouldn't know at that point uh, to be able to combat Auburn being ready for him. Yeah. Yeah. Something you've mentioned several times, even, even our, in our text conversations has been about Auburn's rushing game. You've got a ton of respect for Auburn's rushing game and it, and it's, kind of interesting to me because I went on several radio hits last week at, at SEC Media Days and folks asked questions pointed like, is Auburn's running game going to be better this year? Because it struggled at times last year. And I'm like, Auburn's rushing attack was pretty good. It kind of flew under the radar. Then you you, you pull up stats and folks look at it. It's like, oh yeah, okay. It, it, it was pretty good. So if you're Vanderbilt and it's impossible to project this far, but I'm asking you anyway. Yeah. How, how does how does Vanderbilt stop Auburn's rushing attack because they had a hard time doing it a year ago? Yeah, they. Uh, I think more more movement up front. I, I think blowing up blocking angles, things like that, mm-hmm. stunning, uh, getting linebackers flowing hard, clogging up the middle, and forcing backs to to stop and have to bounce. Uh, things like that, just kind of disrupting running lanes. Things like that probably is is. I think the only way you can stop it because Auburn's just so good at it, you yeah. you, you have to be hyper aggressive and just just start clogging run lanes. Yeah, I think Auburn has done a great job at making the offensive line better this year than a year ago. They went out and got Percy Lewis from Mississippi State. He's going to start at left tackle, which allowed them to start move their left tackle. Last year, Dylan Wade into left guard, and it's always a good thing when you could scoot guard or tackles into guard instead of having to do you know the other way around. So, to me, it's set up for the rushing game to be better from a personnel standpoint than it was a year ago. Which to me is, if Auburn's going to win eight games this season, sure, Peyton Thorne's going to need to be better. The receivers are going to need to be better, no question. But it's going to be because of the rushing attack. Yeah, I mean it's going to set up everything. Um, just like yeah. for Vandy, I mean we're we're constructed very similarly because we have a lot of question marks out wide with the with the receiving core. Yeah, um, tight end is going to be a really strong position for Vanderbilt, um, but the rushing attack is what both of our teams are going to lean on. Uh, Vandy probably more so uh, supplementing with quarterback run game and option run game, uh, probably more so than than Auburn would. Um, Auburn's got three really stud running backs. Uh, Jarquez Hunter's one of my favorite running. He was one of my favorite running backs to watch in the league last year. I think, I think where people thought Auburn was bad was because oftentimes they would bog down because the passing attack was just so weak that yeah. teams could load up. And sure. it looked a lot worse than it actually was, but it was extremely productive. And uh, I, I know – there was one game that stood out to me in particular, and that was the, the the Georgia game as far as the rushing attack goes. I mean, they 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 ran really well against a elite defense, and so that yeah. right there stood out to me. I was like, okay, Auburn, they can run the dang ball. I don't know about throwing it, but they can run it for sure. And this is uh, this is going to be difficult to stop if they could ever figure out a passing attack. Yeah, that Georgia game, it's like they realized who they were. Mm -hmm. offensively it it took them until that point to realize like oh we can run the football because if you can run against georgia you can run against anybody and Mm -hmm. so that's yeah it's kind of when they it's something clicked as far as okay this is who we are as a team so auburn and vandy both of these teams seem to be better this year than they were a year ago how does that play into the matchup and what have they done this offseason we'll jump into more of that in just a moment in this crossover edition of locked on auburn and locked on vandy Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Corey, can you imagine a, 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 a sports book being better than FanDuel? No. No. Oh, no I, way. I, Fan, FanDuel has so many cool bets. Like, I, I love the player props. That's my favorite thing. Player props, sure. I, I love all of the, the win totals 
going into the season. That's a yeah, big those, thing yeah, too. Those future, those future bets are good too. Yep, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. And look, Bandy's that's kind of what you got to look at. What's that? Bandy's at two and a half. Two and a half. That seems low. Are you taking really the over low. on that? Yeah, I, I already jumped on the over on that. Yeah, Auburn's at seven and a half, and I think I'm taking the over on that. I think they go eight and four. So sure. we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Look, the FanDuel this summer they're hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. So that's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball and the Locked On Podcast Network. Both of these teams feel better going into the season this year than they did a year ago. I think that's fair. I think it's yeah. fair. A lot of that, I think, has to do with the offense. New quarterback for Vandy, new receivers for Auburn. When Vandy has the football, what was the biggest addition on Vandy's offense? And I'll share the, the, the biggest addition on Auburn's defense that, you know, that could impact this matchup, Corey. Uh, the biggest addition is Eli Stowers, the transfer from New Mexico State, the tight end. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's such a matchup problem. Um, he's he's big, physical, but he can also run. He was a quarterback. He's a quarterback by nature, converted to a tight end, just a bigger body guy. Um, not really a, a traditional inline tight end type. He's more of a he can play in any any spot and just kind of moves around the formation, but is extremely athletic. How did he do when he played Auburn last year? Do you have that on? Do you know Eli Stowers? Yeah, I think he caught a touchdown. He he had a he had a pretty good game. I I, I remember him catching. Feels like everybody did. Feels yeah. like everybody did on that yeah. offense. Yeah. Goodness yeah. gracious, that was just a bizarre thing. I think he caught the first touchdown. Four catches, forty eight yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, pretty yeah, pretty solid day. And I think he even had a throw on a trick play too. Did did he have? It says nine carries. Did he run the ball too? Yeah, I think he runs jet sweeps. How about that? How about that? Yeah, so, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if he can do that against uh, – does he have a better stat line in last year's game or this year's game, if you had to guess? This year's game. You think, think he does better around. than four catches, 48, and a touchdown? Yeah, I think there's more around him wow. to protect him. I, he was such a focal point of that New Mexico State passing attack, and there was not a whole lot around him. Yeah. Um, I, I think right. he. I think there's more to protect him, so I think he has – I think you'll have better windows. The the thing that Auburn addressed the most on the defensive side of the ball was the defensive front. They lost a lot. And so they brought in a bunch of guys, some older guys, to kind of bolster the depth in the interior defensive line. Philip Bleedy from Indiana. Yeah. Isaiah Rakes from Texas A&M slash USC. He was at USC for spring. He never played there. But those types of guys, Gage Keys, um, from Kansas, Trill Carter from Texas, a bunch of these dudes who've played a bunch of college football. They brought those guys in via the portal to, to one start. Some of those guys will start and then also to, to add yeah. depth. So to, to me, I think that's going to be an important aspect of this. Well, yeah, it's because you know, you, that's going to be needed against the run game and, and stopping, sure. stopping the run game. So let's flip the script. Now Auburn has the football. Okay. And we, we, we've talked so much about the run game. Yeah. How is what has Auburn done to improve the depth of their offense in the passing attack? Yeah, I mean, goodness gracious, they've totally revamped it, Corey. It looks like a totally different passing attack from a year ago. Peyton Thorne's still the guy throwing the passes, but Cam Coleman, the freshman phenom who stole the show for Auburn's A Day game and really all throughout spring for folks who are paying attention to Auburn, he's just he's exceptional. He doesn't look like an 18 year old, he's going to be a future star in this league and he may start that you know rise to stardom as a true freshman but they also went out and got keandre lambert smith who was a top transfer portal wide receiver in the spring transfer portal of course he's from penn state robert lewis from georgia state who's probably the most decorated uh receiver as far as total yardage and total production in this receiver room and uh, Sam Jackson, who is uh, he played quarterback at Cal, but he's going to play receiver at Auburn. He had a pretty good spring as well. So they uh, they dressed up this receiving core um, a, a ton. And so we'll, we'll see if uh, we'll see if Peyton Thorne can take that step forward now with having more toys to throw to. Absolutely. But uh, the thing that's going to impact uh, Auburn's passing game, the strength of Vandy's defense mm -hmm. is in the secondary. Um, they've built through the portal. 
Um, the, the safety position especially, um, I, I think, for uh, stopping the run uh, on the edges and in uh, and in pass defense, I, I think is probably, if I had to name one position that was the overall strength of the defense, and that's going to be the safety position, followed closely by the corners. Um, okay. and, and corners was like on equal footing, but uh, Marlon Jones was ruled. Uh, he's not going to be playing this year. There's some stuff going on. They haven't figured out exactly what it was, if he's ineligible or – Something okay. there's something there's something fishy going on, but uh, he Got will it. not be playing. He's the he was all conference at Eastern Washington uh, a year ago. But getting C.J. Taylor to stay, who is uh, who is going to be on his third year starting uh, for Clark Lee. Um, he was all SEC. Um, he he was preseason all SEC. I think third team. Um, he'll he'll play a safety role and he'll kind of be like a utility guy. He can play down low. He can play uh, single high. He can play in the two high look. Um, Randon Fontenet, a guy brought in from TCU, uh, will play that kind of star position to where he's more so in mm-hmm. run support, probably to the field side. Um, most of the time, if they if they do a field boundary type thing, he's the more athletic type guy. And then you'll have probably Corday Sidnor playing that edge to uh, to the boundary because he's just a big guy. Um, freshman Dante Carter, he's the he's going to be the uh, he's going to be the best freshman in this class, um, and he's going to be the most impactful freshman in this class because he's going to play a ton. He's, Where does he play? He plays a safety. He, he'll play a free safety role. He'll okay. definitely be a deep safety. He's the most athletic defensive back we probably got uh, coming from San Antonio. Gotcha. And uh, he's going to be he, – He's our, he, he was an early enrollee. Uh, he was a standout in spring. He's already put on 15 pounds of muscle. Um, so he's uh, – He's crushing it in the weight room. He's already becoming a leader on the field. I mean, he's he's somebody that could jump in and play a lot now. Uh, sure. Derricky Wright transferred or got in the portal, committed to Texas A&M um, back in December. Some weird stuff was happening. Decided not to go to Texas A&M, stayed at Vanderbilt. I think Clark Lee finally convinced him to stay. Oh, nice. Um, he had already made his decision before Clark Lee made his decision to take over as defensive coordinator. Um, and – you know, I I don't blame him for jumping in the portal at the time that he did, but I think he reconsidered it, realized how good he was going to be with Clark Lee calling the shots, and so he decided to ultimately stay. Yeah, sure. And then and then Mark Davis, all conference corner, is going to be really good as well. Sure. Yeah. So uh, a lot of stuff happened in the defensive backfield there. So we'll, we'll <laughs> see how Auburn tries to attack that in a few months. Way too early. But let's give our predictions real quick for, for this game. I, I think Auburn wins. I, I don't know if it's going to be as one-sided as it was last year, but but I do think Auburn does win this game at home. Well, to stay with my bold prediction, I, I've got to call an upset here. I'm going to say do it. Uh, Andy's going to win it in the last, the last minute by kicking a field goal. It's going to be a tight game, a uh, physical game, uh, and then Vandy's going to be looking uh, for their fifth win there, and I think they get it on their way to uh, and that'll give them the energy boost that they'll need to beat South Carolina. I'm trying to think like what the reaction would be if Auburn lost to Diego Pavia two are, years are in Auburn a row. Fans, okay, I got to ask you: Are Auburn fans storming the gates if that happens? There's a lot of upset people that's happening. I don't know exactly what the the action would be, but there'd be a lot of upset people. There'd be a lot of people asking some pretty big questions. No question yeah. about it. No question about it. Corey, for all the Auburn folks watching, how, the, how can they check out everything that you've got going on? Well, they can find me on YouTube, Locked on Vandy, um, obviously on social media, all social media platforms uh, at Locked on Vandy. I, partic- I participate the most on X, but you can also find me on Instagram as well. Uh, when we get our uh, Chopity account going, you, you'll you'll find a lot more Instagram reels there, and uh, yeah. that'll be something I focus on uh, as, we, uh, as we move into the – into the new new era of uh, AI, but um, at Coach Burton thirty six is my personal account. You can find everything that I do, um, and at Coach Corey Burton on uh, Instagram as well. You can find me um, in my YouTube channels. Yeah, and for the Vandy folks, please uh, please check out Locked On Auburn. The same places on YouTube or uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much for this crossover edition. This has been a crossover edition of Locked On Auburn and Locked On Vandy, all, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.